All right, we live. What's up, YouTube? All right, you're now tuned in to the Power of Ownership podcast. This is your host, Brandon B. Dixon. What my guest are here, Chris Jones. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Hey, how's it going, everybody? I'm Chris Jones. I'm a local realtor down here in Houston, Texas. And thanks for having me. <laughs> really happy to be here. Yeah, so this is one of my f- referral partners from day one. So we've been working together and having a, had a great 2008, but we want to have a 18. awesome uh, 2018. <laughs> we want to have an awesome 2019. So, exactly. so we, we, we've been working together trying to get our community into more ownership. Again, if this is your first time, let me briefly introduce our podcast, which is the Power of Ownership Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon B. Dixon. I'm a writer, published author, uh, mortgage broker, sales trainer, entrepreneur. Um, and the Power of Ownership Podcast is normally about ownership of businesses, intellectual properties, houses, real estate, anything, even ownership of the mind, body, and soul. Um, and it's now morphed to even more ownership of yourself, taking control of yourself, and then in turn, being able to manifest it on the outside. Um, for people that's been watching, you know, I want you to, you know, support us since day one. I want you to tell a friend to tell a friend. So we got to get our YouTube up. Our, uh, audio is, 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 you know, is doing its thing. We can do better. But I want people to go ahead and start following us on uh, YouTube. So being that loan officer, like, subscribe, comment on the, on the, on the bottom because we're trying to build that up. So if you like the show, you support the show, go ahead and uh, start uh, following us. And tell your friends to tell a friend and start sharing the link. Um, Chris. Tell them how long you've been in the business as far as real estate. Kind of tell them your specialty and kind of, you know, kind of tell them a little bit of background about yourself. Like, okay. where, you know, where you went to school and yeah. the school and so on and so forth. Okay, well, uh, I've been in Houston for about 12 years. Mm-hmm. I'm originally from Alabama. Okay. Uh, my background is uh, electrical engineering, actually. So okay. I got my electrical engineering degree from Tennessee State University mm-hmm. in Nashville. And I bounced around a little bit uh, in the corporate realm. So now I've been doing real estate for three years, and I do that full time now. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. What's your specialty as far as real estate? Kind of what's your well, I, I work to. I work a lot with first time home buyers, and mm-hmm. uh, again, it's, and just me from example, I just bought my first house four years ago, so okay. I kinda, I'm familiar with the experience. So gotcha. I, I, I like to help, like you, you're a trainer. I like to help educate my clients on the process, so they know what to expect and, and have that, that great feeling of home ownership like I did. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, I wanted to go over a couple of things this week. You know, uh, we're coming to you weekly. It's either going to be Friday or Sunday. We kind of fixated on Sunday because I, we want to have that Sunday morning alternative, you know, so people that's trying to find themselves and instead of, you know, uh, turning to your local gospel channel, you might turn on the Power Ownership uh, podcast and get all the education and motivation you need for that week. Um, a couple of things have been on my mind this week, and one of the things that's been on my mind is one of the topics today is taking control of yourself. Like, for people that's kind of in the beginning, mm-hmm. stages of kind of finding themselves, and they're tired of, you know, they're, they're kind of tired of being in a rat race, mm-hmm. tired of being kind of stuck in the mud, or tired of being not in control of their life. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you think they need to do in order to Stop the car, you know, because in order to reverse it, you got to stop the car first. Yeah. Put, you know, slow it down, put it in reverse, then, you know, they go the other way. Yeah. So, what do they need to do? Because, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people confused. Yeah. They don't know what to do mm-hmm. in order to start owning the business or take that mm-hmm. initiative to start taking control where they're more in control of their, their own life. What do, what do you think about that? I mean, first, it's of course going to be mindset because, right. I mean, you're, you're taught all your life, you know, uh, get your education so you can get a, a good job and, and work somewhere, retire and enjoy your retirement. Mm-hmm. But lately, I mean, you don't see that anymore as far as, especially in corporate America, you don't really see people working 30 plus years at one company, retiring, right. getting pensions and things like of that nature. So if you are interested in uh, in learning something different, I mean, start reading books, start finding mm-hmm. out, you know, uh, what you're interested in, find out who's killing it out here that's doing it right now and see what they did. So right. yeah, it, you don't have to recreate the wheel. There's already information out there for you to get. So mm-hmm. My thing is to, to kind of start 
you know, and I and I deal with the the self a lot in the metaphysical, and, and I think in this if you look at this the last show, I think what you need to do is start with the inner self, start with your meditation and your prayer, mm-hmm. or convert your prayer to meditation. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we taught, you know, doctrine. You know, we, we a lot of us grew up with a heavily Christian, you know, especially in our community, mm-hmm. overtone. And we kind of talk more to pray, and we kind of talk, you know, I'm not, you stay away from meditation. Mm-hmm. And meditation and prayer are kind of similar. Yeah. Meditate. The difference between meditation and prayer is instead of prayer, is you're asking for some type of outside force to intervene in your affairs to make things come into fruition. Meditation is a little bit different. Meditation is slowing down your thoughts, concentrating on what you want, and working and developing a plan on how you can bring it into fruition yourself. Mm-hmm. That's the difference. So if you go into meditation and just think about that thing over and over and how you can achieve it, the answer will reveal itself to you. Mm-hmm. Whether it's in a, uh, directly to you, the answer will become clear to you. That's all I can say. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be very clear what you need to do. Now, like I said on the last time, it's a three-part equation. Asking you shall receive, seeking you shall find, knocking the door shall be unto, open unto you. Mm-hmm. Three parts. You know, And I said this in the last podcast. Ask, that's your meditation, your prayer. Seek, you got to do your research, like you said. Mm-hmm. Read your books. Look at your YouTube video. Look at the Power of Ownership podcast. Get your motivation. Mm-hmm. Next is, now you got to get your butt up and knock on that door. This is the covenant we under. Nothing happens without action. Nothing. So if you're waiting to just sit there and something's going to pop in your lap, you're going to be waiting a few lifetimes. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen. Right. Again, it's all about the action. But you gotta start within yourself. And it's all the action's gonna be there. You, and you gotta you gotta you gotta take that time to just slow down your thoughts. Yeah. Because nobody became rich or created wealth by having a great idea and not acting on it. Right, exactly. And this doesn't happen. You know, the the lottery mindset mm-hmm. I think is a as is a as a as a as a plant to give people hope that's unrealistic. So if you're waiting, banking to win lottery, and I've had people like that, man, if I win a lottery, that mindset would never get you rich. You'll never be successful. I forget what, uh, I was listening to an audio book. I can't remember which one it was, but they were talking about the lottery specifically, and they were like, uh, they did research, and the study showed that you would be more likely to die in a car on the way to buy your lottery right, ticket than exactly. you to win the lottery. So. Right, right. <laughs> Why risk? <laughs> right. <laughs> I've never played the lottery. I don't gamble. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. The reason why I never played the lottery is because I would be more interested in taking that dollar, but I don't even know how much lottery costs, but mm-hmm. taking that money and investing into my business mm-hmm. where I have a fighting chance of doubling or tripling that, that dollar as opposed to wasting it yeah. on a lottery yeah. type thing. Got to find a way to make the dollar work for you. Right. So my thing is first go within yourself. I know this gets redundant for the people that's been supporting us and been and looking at it, but that's the believe me or not, that's the, the key to everything is going within yourself, going within and meditating first. Second thing is, and this is to tell a quick story. I was watching this week, uh, uh, and I'm not a big TV watcher, but something made me check and see what's the latest on Netflix, mm-hmm. you know, just to check and see. And I stumbled upon this uh movie called Interview with God, I think it's a Netflix original or whatever, I'm not sure, mm-hmm. but. Uh, it, it had heavy, heavy, heavy Christian overtones on it, and it was about an Afghani veteran that came back. He was a journalist out there in Afghanistan. Seen a lot of his friends get killed, and he came back. He's a veteran now. Came back to the states now. He's working at a local paper, and somebody claimed to be God wanted to interview with him. So at first he's thinking this guy is off his rock or something. Just go ahead and see what he's talking about, and he wind up knowing that the person that's supposed to play God wind up knowing a lot of personal things about it. So he started believing, hey, you might know. But this was supposed to be a ploy, I guess, for whoever wrote this to try to clarify some of the dogma. But me, looking at it, I, you know, I try to look at things objectively. I got more confused after I watched the film than I was <laughs> before. Uh-huh. So when they were trying to explain this dogma about, you know, free will or predestination, it, it just didn't make sense. What they say in the film was, um, yeah, I created free will. You know, I know everything, but I created free will. But it's just like a parent telling a child what not to do. I expect you not to do it, but you have the choice to. But 
I don't, I don't get it. You don't have, you have a choice, but you know everything. So you know what choice I'm going to make anyway. Mm -hmm. So it never did make sense to me. Mm -hmm. You know, the dogma. That, and I can remember as a teenager when I was in dogma, and when I was in, and I used to question, like, what is it? Is it going to be predestination or is it free will? Mm -hmm. Which one is it? You can't have either or. I mean, you can't have both. It's either yeah, or. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if you believe in predestination, well, there's an all-knowing entity that's a sky daddy that's looking on you, intervening in your affairs. He knows what you're gonna do. So you have people that's predestined to go to hell. Right. You know, you, yeah. you, you, you're gonna have. Based on that, yeah. You, 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 mm -hmm. come with me. Never did sit well with me. So this question stuff like that, mm -hmm. and the, the the film reaffirmed that. He kind of, you know, muddied the water with that too. Like you know, there's not a clear cut answer. They really can't answer that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So just thinking back. In that state I was in, I see why a lot of people are frozen and taking on action. Because you, your, your mind is everything. Your mind leads your body. If your mind is frozen and you're stuck in dogma, you're scared to make a move because you don't know where to turn. You don't know where your salvation. That's another thing they tried to address in the film, salvation, which was money. You know, they, you know, they didn't give a click on it. What's your salvation? Mm -hmm. So you don't know. So you, you're scared to take action. And you're frozen. So a lot of people are confused mm -hmm. with how they were brought up with the dogmatic thing that a, a, a sky that is going to strike you if you make the wrong move. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, so my thing is to really seek within yourself. If you're in that particular mind frame and you think that, you know, you're in that particular dogma, seek answers. You know, my, mm -hmm. my advice is to go to your, go to your preacher. Go to your pastor, your your your, your minister, whatever. Mm -hmm. Ask them, ask them the hard questions. If you can't get them within inside your particular set of rules, look outside. That's another thing. I, I, I heard what I think Corey Holcomb or somebody said. You know, how do you know your religion is right when you haven't researched anybody else? Right. Yeah. You know, so. But we were brought up. Right. You, you, you just got to know that you know. Right. Okay. Seek outside. Yeah. Think about it. If you you know it, that doesn't mean you you're weak minded. That right. means you're strong minded. If you're if it's not if it's not better than what you got, stick with what you got. Mm -hmm. But seek answers that from everywhere. Yep. And you'll see a lot of similarities. Right. And you'll see a lot of similarities. But at the same time, you don't know what you don't know. Exactly. So limiting yourself, that's why you're stuck in the rut mm -hmm. that you're in. Yeah. And, and and when you're interacting with other people, they may not follow the same beliefs as you. Right. So the fact that you've done research and you understand where they're coming from, you've got more of a common ground. Right, right. And then it actually it gets you more well-rounded, actually, you know. Um, yeah, that that would be my advice. Just seek, 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 seek. Yeah. You know, and you shall find the answers. You know, and if your pastor or your, your minister don't have the answer, seek everybody. Ask a, ask an imam, ask a rabbi. Ask them different things and see their perspective. Gather their perspective. And you don't have to take everything that they say the heart, digest mm -hmm. certain things and, do and, they, yeah, they, and, and, and use what you can. Yep. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of people block their actual blessings, block their progression by blocking that off. Does that make sense? Oh, I ain't going to mess with that. Yep. You, you don't know what kind of opportunities will lead to you understanding other people's point of view or some other information. Right, right. So a lot of that, and that's part of the reason why you're in this particular shell. You're in the shadows. You're in the darkness. You know, so how, how can you play football? Or how can you know, see the game? You play basketball and you're in the dark. You want to see everything. You want to get as much light as possible so you can see what you're doing. Right. You, so that's kind of my advice as far as control. Um... One other story I wanted to tell, though, that kind of relates to that, you know, real quickly, is that um, this is a good segue to the second portion I wanted to talk about, is that um, I had a client, and this doesn't happen to me that often, you know, and um, and it relates to the dogma, you know, uh, I, right before I left Gallery Furniture, and for those that know, don't know, I used to be the training development manager at Gallery Furniture for, for almost six years, and I sold this woman and her husband a mattress. Um, and she was uh, the over religious type, you know. I'm talking about the whole. I'm, let's pray. Let's pray before we do this, and you know, we let, let's let's say a prayer, you know, in Jesus' name, and all this. You know, she was that type, you know, um, the overly religious person. Um, so 
she told me like in 2019 March her lease would be expiring. But I want to see. She I, I got my license right before I left Canada. I already got my license, so um, I was like, hey, I'm about to go to the mortgage industry. Here's my card. So like, yeah, I'm gonna get with you and uh, you know uh, see what I need to do in order to get this house. Mm -hmm. So she did the application. We ran her. She had uh, a, a tag on, I don't know if y'all know what Cabras. Cabras is a, a, a separate outside of the credit bureau uh, entity that reports if you have any defaults on student loans or anything like that. They will tag you and you you will not be able to get a, a FHA, a, a VA loan, or a USDA, any type of government loan you won't be able to get if you're behind on your student loans. Okay. So they work. So I told her, as soon as you get up to date on your student loans and you get released from Cabras, call me. And then we'll go ahead and proceed. So, no, not, didn't hear anything. I got her in my calendar to call her in 2019. Called her. Hey, uh, oh, okay, uh, what happened was, you know, I, you know what, the, what happened was, as soon as I got released from Cavers, uh, you know, I believe in God, right? And, you know, and it just happened so fast. So, she stuck into this, this, this I, I got to see signs. And some kind of way she went with another lender because it, it, this was the timing. Instead of having it, she, so she just rode a wave. Instead of going Instead of being in control of her life, and hey, look, I'm going to stay loyal to the person who gave me all the advice, who coached me through it, and helped me set me up. So now you don't know what kind of blessings you block from, from doing that, from stabbing somebody else in the back or not being loyal. Now you cut you to burn the bridge. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and that's what a lot of us do by just riding that wave instead of taking control with the, with the dogma. You know, so my my next topic I want to talk about is how do we lose the loyalty? I know dog was part of it, but how do we lose the loyalty in our community? And that's one of the things why we're still on the bottom, and we don't have that loyalty amongst ourselves like other ethnic groups. Yeah. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I think that's something that we definitely need to work on because, like, uh, we were just even from slavery time we were. Talk to be to fight amongst each other, right? So right. and and then you see it to this day. Mm -hmm. So like you say, you see a, a lot of other uh, people from different backgrounds outside of the African American community that stick together. They, mm -hmm. they form their own little communities within the communities where right. they just support each other. Right. So that's one thing that we definitely need to do better at. But it's just right now it's, it's still tough because there's a lot of people with that crab in the barrel mentality and mm -hmm. they don't want, they still pull you down when you're trying right. to what get away for yourself and then eventually for other people. What did you think, is is it strictly, because we're 400, not, not really 400 years removed, I would say, first of all, let, let's get this straight. You know, we teach a little bit here on the Power of Ownership podcast. All of us weren't slaves. Let's get let's get right. this straight. Do your research on this. You know, first of all, and we have this stigma that everybody uh, that had melanin in their skin was slaves. Everybody without melanin had, was slave owners. BS. Do your research. How, how most Caucasians were in a port in, a, in a apartments. So how you gonna, <laughs> how you gonna own slaves and you're in an apartment yourself? The slave owners back then are still the slave owners now. They're the big corporations. The Chase, the J.P. Morgan Chases, the, the Sears Robux, the big mega corporation had the slaves. And they still have you now. You just clock in and clock out and, you know, rotate your life around what they got going. So, you you, you know, you, 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 you're indentured servant still. So, we can't use slavery as an excuse. I think what happened is more, we're more a victim of social engineering. And reprogramming the mind. Yeah, definitely mental. And we have a European Roman centric mind frame, and the, and it's sprinkled with separation anxiety, meaning that if you do your research, the black and white phenomenon is only about three hundred years old. Yeah. You know, so we just started separating by skin color about 300 years ago. And that was done to stop the working class from revolting. So if y'all bicker amongst each other, then the owner class could, you know, just sit pretty while y'all bickering amongst each other and still get all the money. You know, that's what the black and white thing is for a skin color was. Because if you look at it, there were dark-skinned Roman emperors. Right, yep. <laughs> yep. 
you know, there were like there were fair skinned Egyptian uh, pharaohs, uh, the Ptolemies, and all that. So it wasn't a skin color thing back then. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now they knew, all right, you know, the, the Caucasian was different, and there was you know a new species to the planet. But uh, the, the Moors and everything, they embraced them, you know, and taught them, and, and educated and civilized them. So it wasn't really a skin color separation. This is a new phenomenon, black and white. Mm -hmm. So what happened within the last 300 years that we got in our brain that skin color automatically equals negative, automatically equals I'm against it, automatically in, enters lesser, mm -hmm. lesser uh, value, lesser um, service, lesser everything. You know, because I, I was watching something last night on, actually on the Instagram uh, head, um, Nicki Minaj, her, her uh, concert got canceled. Right. And, uh, you know, just real quick, her boyfriend, they out this carnival, I guess they shut down this carnival so she could go. Mm -hmm. So her boyfriend's punching his bag, well, you know, you, you punch the bag and it, you make it go up and then you win the prize. Oh. You see that? Yeah, yeah. So he's punching his bag, and the first thing is inward this, inward that. So look at the hatred that's automatically embedded in us. And that's from the music and everything like that. We can kill as many of us as possible. You talk about killing some else, you get shut down and get banned. So we're victim to the social engineering. And we got in our in our mind, the darker you are, the, the, the scarier you are, the thugger you are, which is, which is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we probably the most docile mm -hmm. and peace loving people on, on the planet. Yeah. Yep. So what did, you know, so you gotta ask yourself, where did this come from? Yeah, and it's like it's classism. Right. So like you said before, you know, like the wealthy wanna remain wealthy and, right. and they, they, they wanna create that separation. So even if you even if you look now the 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 separation gap between the wealthy and what's supposed to be the middle class mm -hmm. and lower classes, it just keeps it's getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. And we, while we sleep, yep. we sleep while we're so busy. And we talked about this on a couple of shows ago, the distractions. Yep. Distracted on what Beyonce's um, doing or what R. Kelly's doing. Mm -hmm. And steadily, they're steadily lapping us while you sleep. Yep. And this is another thing, real quick story. I was watching... Ben X, shout out to Ben X, shout, shout out to Reza Islam. You know, young brothers kind of doing anything, trying to reprogram, same as we're doing. And he had a, a teacher on his panel. And he said, this was a teacher in the Dallas Fort Worth area. He said that every school day, not occasionally, every school day, he got to break up to the dark, darker, melanated uh, children on talking to, talking about each other, roasting mm. every day. Every day we, we gotta talk about each other. Mm -hmm. So that's a that's kids. So where yeah. is this coming from? Yeah. To where we feel even our kids have in their mind a lesser value of you if your skin is dark. And we gotta ask ourselves, where does this come from? Mm -hmm. And how can we stop it? Yeah. And yeah, definitely gotta find a way to reverse the, the mentality that, that has been ingrained right. thus far because like you said, like it's only slowing us down. Right, right. Well, that's the thing. If you don't have the love of yourself, then you ain't gonna have the love of somebody that look like you. Yeah. Just like we were talking about earlier before we started going live, is that I had this problem as an entrepreneur. You know, every time I give one of us a chance, we take advantage of it. Forty-five minutes late, an hour late. We don't respect mm -hmm. the job. So it all starts with respecting one another, respecting yourself. First, if you love your, if you truly love yourself, family, you have no choice but to love somebody that look like you. Yeah. And that's always been, you know, I, I'm, I'm pro everybody. I'm pro human. I, I think my my beliefs is this. I rarely get into my beliefs on 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 a, on a show, but I say it like this: I believe that there's only one race, the human race. Now we have different ethnicities, mm -hmm. but. I, I'm, I'm for everybody that's for me. But this is the thing. I have an extra special place in my heart for a person that look like me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cheer for you a little bit harder 
Because I like to see myself make it, and I see your, myself and you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I think where I got this from is not only, and then I was raised just like everybody else. I was raised in, you know, how I went against the, the, the curve is just trying to be better than everybody. You know, just trying to be better than what I've seen mm-hmm. in the church. Just trying to be better than what I've seen in my community. That and the music I listen to. I listen to a lot of East Coast music. Mm-hmm. Gangstar, Tribe Called Quest, um, De La Soul, you know, Jungle Brothers, Black Sheep. That had that X-Clan, that had that pro-black mentality. And that kind of shaped me. And I, I might even come out with a shirt with this, like, Wu-Tang raised me. Mm-hmm. This, that, that, that mentality kind of just stuck in me, in, in, in my subconscious. So... That man, I never did listen to. I mean, I listened to a little southern, you know, uh, portions, West Coast portions, but mainly that 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 era caught me. That pro black era, mm-hmm. that's what caught me, and that's what made me how I am today. So now we don't have that. Now we have podcasts that's kind of popping up, mm-hmm. but the music. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we got we got a lot of other right. So we other need types mixing it up. We need that, you know. Even though it five out of a hundred, it'll be the one that can catch. We still need it. Yeah. So if we don't have none, we gonna have none out of hundred. Right. So that's what made me different, family. Is just uh, just having that, that love for yourself. I mean, you gotta have that love for yourself first. If you don't like yourself, if you talk, you know, look at the bleaching cream and all that stuff. You know, you want to be lighter and stuff like that. You know, know that melanin is a conductor of sun. You get all your information from the sun. We talk the complete opposite. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you want to bleach, you want to block the, the your information. We hide and try to get light. Look at the mentality, man. Yeah. So, the thing is, this tune into the Power of Ownership podcast. We're gonna start to break down some of this stuff. We're gonna try to reprogram the mind. Give you an example that hey, you can be successful. Look at me, I'm dark skinned, big dude, but I'm smart. And I'm for us. You don't have to sell out in order to make it. You don't have to go over to they play with their team. You still be the captain of your team. Why not? Well, you know, that's another mentality. We always think we got to switch teams mm-hmm. in order to run it. Yeah. You got to switch teams. I'm going to be the example. Look at us. You see what I'm saying, family? Mm-hmm. So I don't want to ramble too, 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 <laughs> too long, but my thing is solutions. How do we get the loyalty back? I kind of touched on it a little bit. Why don't we get your insight? How do we get the loyalty back? It's going to be one person at a time. But I, I, th- I think, like, just getting everybody, like, the podcast is reaching out to people right. so they're getting this information. Like, the more information you get, the right. smarter you become. So, right. like, people that aren't ex- have never been exposed to it, right. how can you expect them to change right. unless they have that willingness to go out and find it? Right, right. So, so one thing, that's what we need to do is just continue to do things like this, um, get more in front of the faces of our people and, and start giving them this information. Right, start being that example. Yeah. Not, that's my thing is that's why I'm aspirational on all social media being that loan officer. Mm-hmm. You know, not too many of us came to that status without being a rapper or entertainer. So I want to be one of the first. I mean I know there's others, mm-hmm. but they're not they're not in the mainstream. Mm-hmm. That where you can have that example. You know, you have Barack Obama and all that stuff like that. He's just not starting to make money. Yeah. You know, but Having that other path, that role model to show you that, hey, you don't have to be stuck in this particular mold that you, they want you to be in, which is perpetuating the European mind frame, if you look at it, yeah. like, hey, I'm not going to not make your money how you make your money. Right. But it doesn't just have to be in, in, in the entertainment. Right. It could be other ways that you yeah. can make money. Yeah. And be an example. You don't have to bite your tongue and sell out and cross team and advocate for a different team in order to make it. I'm going to show you that you could go and still be you and make it. Mm-hmm. And that's what this program is about. That's what this reprogram is about. We're going to show you how to take ownership of your own team. See, the thing is, this is the thing, family. This picture like teams. This picture like we've been programmed to root for the, the Texans. <laughs> you know, Deshaun Watson is supposed to be the greatest quarterback ever. And we know that if you look at the holistic, at the league, you know that's not true. You got Tom Brady, you got Drew Brees, mm-hmm. and this, this is just a metaphor, family, but we've been so asphyxiated on the Texans, we can't see nothing else. Mm-hmm. 
And that's how we've been as a people. We've been studying they stuff. And we glorify they team. And we want to be Texas fans. We ain't grow up Texas fans. We ain't come from Texas. We come from everywhere. Mm -hmm. So let's start having pride in our team. Even though we're losing right now, we ain't making playoffs in a while. But if you look at it through the worldwide perspective, they only been winning for a couple of hundred years, family. We've been winning for thousands of years. You feel what I'm saying? So we're about to start winning again. Now, what side are you going to be on? You're going to be on the, you know, the, the, the team that's going down because they can't win forever. Or you're going to be on the team that's about to come up. Because our team, cold. Our team, lit. We just don't know it yet. And some of us do. Right. Some of us do. It'll be the, 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 the trailblazers. But we're going to be back lit again, family. Believe it or not. You know, and we need as many people on board as possible. We need to we need to start having fans for our team. Let's start to slow, slow to be, I'm impressed with some of the new generation. Everybody want to be down on the new generation. Yeah, but they got the right mindset. They got a, a, yeah. a my daughter generation, that generation with generation Y or Generation Z. I'm, I'm it's Generation Z, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's the reason why they call it Z. Might be the last, you know, old. So Generation Z, they, they own it. You know, my, my generation, I'm Generation X. I'm right before Millennial. Mm -hmm. We kind of the ones that kind of let, let us down. Got too, you know, um, got too content with this particular and trying to fit in too hard. This is the thing, man. We got to, we got to make the changes, make subtle changes, even if it's a little a degree here, a degree there. In the long run, it'll better opposition for, for future generations. Just make that sacrifice. Yeah. Um, one of the things, and this is a good segue. One of the things that tie all this together is it's tax season right now. Mm -hmm. Yep. And instead of squandering this opportunity. And doing things that you see the results from years by past. You, you get your tax return, you floss hard for a month or two, then you're back in the same situation. Mm -hmm. So you see the results. Why not try something new this year? So I'm gonna open it up to you. What give us some solutions on what we could do with our tax return to make 19 one of the first steps in a different direction. So uh, even from a real estate perspective, if you're tired of you know paying somebody else's more right. and you're okay. ready to achieve that, that's a good tool that that right. refund can be used to pay towards your down payment and your closing costs. If you're not ready for that, but you still are interested into doing something to better your condition, mm -hmm. even uh, there have been groups of pool pool resources together mm -hmm. and get into ownership, start businesses. Right, right. So there are different avenues you could take, but right. it's definitely. Of worth looking into instead of squandering on things that you're going to enjoy right now, but then end up suffering later. Right, no doubt. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, that's a good thing as well. First of all, we're wasting thousands, well, millions, billions of dollars on rent. Yeah. And a lot of people, I look at their profile when they come to me, they been could afford a house. The two I just closed yesterday, well, Friday, um, they took advantage of the down payment assistance. Mm -hmm. You come out with like, uh, you know, a $1,000 out of pocket. That's less than your tax return. There's down first time home buyer grant that you can do. And you have, you know, that'll pay your down payment and give you a percentage towards closing costs. Mm -hmm. So think about it. I don't think we realize how much money you wasted on rent. Let's just take simple numbers. Let's, if your rent is $1,000 a month, family, that's twelve thousand dollars a year, gone. And how many You'll years? never see again. And how many years do you do that? You do that five <laughs> years. That's sixty thousand dollars. You do that ten years. You rent for ten years. You rent for the time you're twenty-one to you're thirty-one. That's one hundred twenty thousand. That's a that's a house right there, or at least a condo yeah. that you pay for or a townhouse. Mm -hmm. So and that money's gone. When you own your home, not only is the taxes deductible, you're gonna get back at the end of the year. The interest is deductible. Yep. Any points you paid is deductible. Also, any work you do in your house you, is deductible. Mm -hmm. So you get all that back. Yeah. All the mortgage insurance, you get all that back at the end of the year. Um, not only that, is that that property is never going to be worth zero unless you, nobody's going to pick up a house and steal it. Right. In fact, 
for the most part, especially in an uh, uh, economy like Houston, a city like Houston, that money is going to appreciate. Right there. So if you pay $150,000 for a house now, by the time 2025 rolls uh, along, it's probably going to be worth $175,000, $180,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially like you said with the economy in Houston right. and Houston bringing in new jobs, people right. moving, still moving here from everywhere. Right, so right. There, there will not be any drop in the economy in Houston anytime soon. It's an oil and gas economy, so it's a safe investment with the school districts and the, the football and everything like that. And even the medical center. We're even the medical center. In the world's largest right. medical center. So. so it's a safe bet that your money will gain value over the course of years. So it's a safe bet to go ahead and own your home instead of renting. It doesn't take, you don't have to have perfect credit. You don't have to have a lot of money now. It's, you know, it's just plain facts. It's simple mathematics. Yeah. Then you can't leave an apartment to your loved ones. Right. Once you die, that landlord is going to clean out your stuff and, somebody else and move somebody else in. You can't pass that down intergenerationally. You're going to lose that. So all your money has gone as well. Yeah. So there's no excuse, family. You know, first off, own your own home, then get right back in the game and start getting rental properties, getting your rental portfolio together. Mm -hmm. You go do all this with your income tax. Think about it. And I have all this, at, I have this at the end of every show. Think about, visualize, close your eyes and visualize you owning your own home. You're not having to worry about parking in your neighbor's spot or your neighbor's having company over where you can't, you, can, you, don't have, you lost your parking spot for the day. Are you, you know, are you on the first floor? The people upstairs are stomping on the right, floor. stomping and having a party or whatever. Yeah. On the second floor, imagine you being able to. If I want to paint a wall, I paint a wall. If I want to hang a TV, I hang a TV. If I want to knock this wall down, I knock this wall down. And I have to ask permission. You know, um, imagine at the end of the year you get ten thousand more dollars back off your income tax, as opposed to. You know, this this, this that five thousand. My first year when I got my house built in fourteen, I went from paying to fifteen thousand dollars. I used to have to pay every year. Yeah. You know, this owning that, that mortgage, boom. Yeah. Tip, Reverse tip, tip, tip the scale. Yeah. So we missing out, family. Call us. My number is eight three two seven seven five eight three five seven. Call me. I will coach you through getting to the process. Stop wasting money. A lot of times you could uh, get into a house the same price as you rent, yeah. if not less sometimes. Yeah. And especially with the, uh, like you said, the down payment assistance, and Houston has a great program. Right. Well, we got a couple of great programs. Yeah. Like, you know, again, I have, go back on uh, earlier shows, my, my podcast on earlier shows. I have plenty of, you know, I'll break each one down. Check that out. We got webinars coming soon where we're going to break it down where, going to be free to you, a uh, one-on-one -on -one webinar where you can download it or go on it and we'll break down this seek. Again, seek and you shall find. Yeah. Stay in touch with us. Big in that loan officer on all social, Instagram, Facebook, um, Snapchat, everywhere. Big in that loan officer. Where, where can they find you on social? Uh, my social is all the same too, Facebook, Instagram, Realtor Jones Cares. Realtor Jones Cares. Mm -hmm. So look him up. We're here to help you. First thing first, get out of renting, get your own home. A year or two from now, I want to help you again, and let's get these rental portfolios. That way we can start reversing them. Again, in order to stop a car, I mean, in order to, uh, to, to reverse a car, you got to slow it down. So if we have enough people, this is my goal, mm -hmm. we have enough people, instead of everybody else coming from foreign countries, you got Pakistanis coming in, you got everybody coming in and owning these houses, that we rent, let's start having us as the landlords. When we own whole uh, communities, right? we own this whole subdivision. That's my vision. You know, mm -hmm. and we start to take that money and just start circulating. Now we got a whole little strip mall. We got a whole little town. Where's our culture? Mm -hmm. I want to see where our culture, you know, we got to search. Our culture scattered everywhere. Mm -hmm. I want to go to one place where I can, everything I need right there. That's my goal. But we got to start somewhere. Start with owning our own house. Let's start getting our rental portfolios. That way we got that disposable income to start dumping in the stuff for us. Yes. You know, so it all starts with that. First thing first, how can you make changes if you ain't controlling your life? Yeah, you got to start with you. Start with you. 
If you ain't trying to own your own business, if you ain't trying to own your own home, first, it starts with that. And that's what we come in. That's what we do as a profession. Yeah. And in turn, we're going to help y'all from there. Yeah. Um, take that income tax and do something positive with it. Do something that's going to make you some money while you sleep. Exactly. They got too many businesses where... <laughs> I don't even want to go in. There's so many businesses where you can just set up and you just make money, just wake up and make money. Yeah. You know, um, the new economy is going to be selling and marketing. Pick up my book. It's out right now. I teach you, this is the only book, sales book, written by a quote-unquote black man. It's a seven-step process. It works. That gallery furniture would make millions of millions of dollars. I've trained over 150 salespeople to make six figures. All of my guys make six figures. Pick up this book, $19 investment, will yield you six figures. I guarantee you, if you follow the process. You spend that on food. You spend that on Popeyes <laughs> or whatever. Pick up the book, Sales, the Nucleus of Any Profession. Just put, go to Amazon, put in Brandon B. Dixon, and it will pop up. Read the book, invest you in the business, use the process, and you're going to see the results. The next year, instead of taking that 5000 and spending it on just catching up on your bills or um, buying that new purse or buying that new, those new red bottoms or whatever you're going to buy, <laughs> it's going to give you a temporary, just like candy. Give you a temporary hobby, it's going to shoot right back, back down. Take that money and take, take that five and make you 50. Now I can buy two, three purses. Mm -hmm. Now I can buy a couple of pairs of shoes. Right. Because there's nothing wrong with it. But right. It's all, it's, it's got to be in the right order. Right. Yeah. Buy you an asset first that's going to pay for that liability. Period. Do that first, fam. Sacrifice a little, just a little bit. A little bit. And you're going to yield better results. That's, that's all it's about. That's all we're trying to do. We're not trying to change. No, I'm not beating you up. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's little incremental changes will change our whole, our whole perspective of everything. And change. Why not? Why wouldn't you want our streets safer? Why wouldn't you want a better opportunity for everybody? Want the same thing? Everybody want better for their kids. We're not gonna. Do, you're not gonna do it by yourself. You're not gonna move into some neighborhood where you you can hide. They don't want you there for the most part. Let's be all the way real. Mm -hmm. That's why not build it up for ourselves. Build it up for future generations. I'm not going to preach for y'all too long. I know it is Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and get, get out of here. Again, my name is Brandon B. Dixon. I'm an author, writer, sales trainer, entrepreneur, mortgage broker. If you want a mortgage, you want to start uh, the journey of home, home ownership, www.hocmortgage.com. That's www.hocmortgage.com. Call me, 832-775-8357. I'm available 24-7. Chris, same thing. Call, put, your, put your number out there. Yeah, my phone number is 832-338-3182, and I'm available anytime. Call us. We're here to help. Again, until next time, family, my, my uh, catchphrase, God is a verb. Personal responsibility is your only saving. Peace.